Hello and a warm welcome to this special edition of Big Picture coming to you from Dune University in Uttarakhand. The countdown has begun and just a few days left for the state to go to polls. But what is the general sentiment on the street? Many are saying it's a keenly fought contest between BJP and Congress. How are the odds stacked up against these parties and are they able to convince the Pahari voter? Joining me now on my extreme uh, uh, left is Anupam Trivedi. He is Chief of Bureau Hindustan Times. Welcome to you on the show. Uh, next to him is Dhirendra Pratap. He is a Senior Congress Leader and also Chief Media Coordinator of Uttarakhand uh, Congress. Welcome to you, sir. Next to him is Lokesh Ohri. He is an anthropologist and also a cultural activist. Next to him is Manoj Bhatt. He is an associate professor of Dune University. Welcome all of you on this special edition of Big Picture. I'd like to begin with you, uh, Anupam. Will you call 2017 elections in Uttarakhand a watershed election? See, the elections in a state are more about personalities rather than the issues. Okay. And you know, the issues remain the same, which were uh, uh, witnessed in the last three elections too. Like, for example, migration is a one bigger issue for the hill areas. Right. And haphazard construction, which have been taking place in the places like Dehradun, mm -hmm. you know, the surge of population in the plain areas, mm -hmm. is again an issue. How to check it? What are the urban planning? You know, to to to, to place the things in the proper shape in the place like in the plain areas. This remains a big issue. Do you know? But more or less, in the uh, since last one year, when the state plunges into the political crisis. The state has rather become on, you know, it's, it's, it's like a straight fight between Congress A team versus Congress B team. Some of the uh, uh, legislators from the ruling party, right. they joined the BJP. Now it seems that the election is more about the personalities, allegations, counter-allegations. Which again is not a very good sign. I'll come to you, uh, Mr. Dhirendra Pratap. You will have to answer a lot because you are a representative of the government. Uh, what uh, Anupam is saying that basically this election is an issueless election. It is more about personalities, more about the cult. What happens to the aspirations of the Pahari voter? Why are the political parties not able to tell the voters that, look, this is the problem and this is the reason why we have not been able to fulfill your aspirations? Like, for example, taking uh, uh, the, the case of migration. Now, in fact, I don't agree with the submissions of Mr. Anupam. I think this election is closely contested on the issues. Now, what has happened in this state? On 18th March 2016, a democratically elected popular government had been brought down by the centre. And in the process of bringing down these governments from Arunachal to Himachal and from Himachal to Uttarakhand. So which means for you, this is the biggest issue? Ne De definitely, democracy is in danger. The, pre the Prime Minister is speaking like a dictator. Yesterday, what had he had told to the people in Hardwar, I was present in that rally, and I saw that he was dictating terms to Congress. Congress is India, and India is Congress. And if he want to challenge the Congress, we will see, we will fight, and we will win. Every political party has a fair point when they, when they uh, talk like what you are saying, that uh, the democracy is in danger, there is political instability because of the way, uh, you know, the BJP has tried to uh, uh, intervene in the matters of uh, the state government. Uh, Lokesh, I'll come to you. Uh, what happens to the aspirations of the people? Because people, every five years, uh, the, the, uh, the armed janta of the state is expecting moon, expecting stars uh, from uh, the political class, but they are unable to dole it out. Yeah, I'm glad that in your opening comments you mentioned about this election being a watershed election. It might just prove to be a watershed election for national politics as well. Okay. Because In what uh, sense? Because Uttarakhand is a state that has the potential of, you know, uh, taking the U-turn in national politics and and uh, maybe indicate that uh, the uh, Modi magic is, is kind of fading. Okay. Um, and... Uh, uh, because of certain things that have happened in the last one year or so, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the BJP encouraging defections uh, uh, within uh, within the Congress and uh, and and uh, giving uh, more uh, coverage, giving more uh, uh, you know uh, importance to to the people who have defected and come into their party. Right. So in that sense, I think it is. Uh, it, it is it is going to be a watershed, whatever the result may be. Okay. And uh, uh, when you talk about the issues, I think there is a uh, there is a little disconnect between what the issues 
uh, that remain important for the politicians and the issues, and the issues that the which people are important are for the people. With. You made an yes. important point. You, you, you just spoke about uh, uh, the rebel factor, the, the rebellions, the way BJP has engineered uh, rebels and we find uh, uh, turncoats on both sides of the camp, whether it is BJP or whether it is uh, Congress. Don't you think, uh, Mr. Bhatt, that a Pahari voter would actually be confused, a person who's not literate, who's not very literate about the way politics is uh, sweeping in the state. Uh, don't you think that he will be totally confused? Let me uh, elaborate uh, two, three points. One, uh, literacy has nothing got to do with, uh, about, uh, with the, the, the knowledge of democracy. Let me tell you this very, very clear. Be it Bihar, be it UP, be it Uttarakhand. No, or when I say literacy, I'll change my word. I said exercising of wisdom. Somewhere down the line, the voter no, no, would be confused. To assume the fact that people are foolish is, is, is the biggest foolishness that, that can occur. Now, let me tell you two, three points. One is that in India, whether it is Uttarakhand or whether it is any other state of India, there has been no closures, you know no closures of any of the issues okay 1947 you had the poverty issue you had those issues of migration mm -hmm. and you had uh, in 1925 comrade pc joshi talking about uh, the hill state hill state uh, uttarakhand to be made as a state and then when uttarakhand came up still the issues remain the same the problem with india indian polity is that we have not been able to close the issues now Two, three things let me uh, say. One is people claim that migration is a big issue. Now here let me tell you, Uttarakhand as per 2011 census is not the state which has ma maximum out migration. It is not the state which has maximum out migration. Maximum out migration is Bihar. Yet migration has never been put as an issue in Bihar. Now why? Because in Uttarakhand, it, it is a very nice idea, it is a very romantic idea, so to say, to say migration is a big issue. Actually, the fact, what is, if you, if no, you but see, don't you think wait that a minute, wait a minute, let me, within the state, there has been migration from hills to plains. That is true. Hmm. But then, at the same time, if you say the total migration, you have tremendous in-migration from other states, from other states to Uttarakhand for buying property because of its serene beauty and so on and so forth. So you have tremendous in-migration as well. Now, by the way, let me... Uh, so so can, I, can I just interrupt and ask you that what is the actual concept of migration in Uttarakhand? Which migration are we talking about? Are we talking about the migration which is happening from hills to the state or it is happening from plains to other states? When an Uttarakhandi voter or a social activist or a person like you, when he says that, or, or for example, when Anupam says that migration is a very serious issue, on what basis are you saying that this is a serious issue? Which migration are now, you defining? Yes. Now, if you ask any person who, has, who is a proper dem domicile of this state and has been living in sta this state for more than 50 long years, or his family or mm -hmm. her family has been living in this state for more than 50 or 60 years, that person will always claim all, uh, and will uh, always ask, and rightly so, that Uttarakhand should not allow outsiders to settle in this state. Why? The reason being, none of the hill states of India, be it JNK, be it Himachal, be it Sikkim, be it Arunachal Pradesh, be it Manipur, or so and so forth, any of the special category states of India, do not allow outsiders to settle in their now, state. Let, now, let, 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 know, let me finish. Now, the only migration that is, that is troubling is from hills to plains. Now, here what has done, Indian polity, be it Congress, be it BJP, both, they have allowed migration to occur jolly well when it's coming from other states to this state because I, pro property is... I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, Let's uh, bring in Mr. Dhirendra Pratap. Uh, just, just respond to what Mr. Bhatt is saying that uh, the, the political class has allowed this migration to happen. When people from outside states, they are coming and taking over. But the political class has allowed that to happen and that is the reason uh, why... No, in fact, uh, I think uh, Uttarakhand is a state of India. Now some people are talking and uh, sometimes they are commenting like that, that others are coming in our state. If Bengali peoples... Haryanis, Dalites, if they are joining us, they are welcome. If our people are going for uh, employment outside the state, 
it is also welcome. I now, don't know why people are crying so I'm much amazed, on this I'm issue. Amazed here. Now yeah. let me tell you, even while right, Sheikh Abdullah was member of the Constituent Assembly, and not only that, if you now why why hasn't Himachal allowed it? I'm talking about the Himalayan states of India. I'm not talking about other states. It was very well written in the constitu uh, argued in Constituent Constituent Assembly of India mm -hmm. that Himalayan ecosystem is fragile, and hence. The special category states the in migration must be stopped. Now I'm not asking that we are not part of India and hence we shouldn't migrate. Right, right. I, I, I'm I talking about it. the fragility of ha. of the ecosystem. Let, no, no. Let 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 Anupam now respond. That basically uh, talking about the ecosystem of uh, Uttarakhand, whether or not it permits migration or not, that 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 that's that's a serious issue. And uh, if I am not mistaken, migration also became. One of the socio-political movements recently, and when the state government was thinking about bringing in a draft bill on the land consolidation bill, uh, so are they really taking up this issue seriously? Because Congress, in its manifesto, has also said that by 2022, we'll try and uh, ensure that there is a reverse migration which happens. Uh, do you see it's just a lip service, or there is some serious intent behind Congress doing it? See, the thing is, the migration, uh, as the other panelists said. is obvious and it takes place in across the states what is problematic and what is concerning is uttarakhand is this a distress migration right people are leaving their homes their villages That's their cities because they don't have any work to do right. they are just dependent on the government services and right. they are not enough the government services employment opportunities are very little the connectivity the as far as the tourism promotion of the cities and concerned it it depends on connectivity and the facilities they are not there you know so we are not getting the type of tourism we actually uh, want you know the class tour the uh, classic kind of a tourist you leave in out the figures or whatever the figure shows uttarakhand needs a good tourism kind of a, a model a good road map for this like the congress has said they'll ensure the reverse migration but how they have no road plan the road map is not the, there BJP is BJP has raised this issue in their vision document. They are not calling it a manifesto anymore, like the Congress, which they say it. They they call it a letter of pledge or something. Eh? They are not calling it a manifesto as well. They have also promised reverse migration. The BJP has also promised reverse but migration. But both the have, parties, the road map is no lacking. No road map. No how is how they are going to do it. There is no. And, 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 and another thing, uh, hmm. uh, I like to bring in Lokesh here. Don't you believe that both the parties are talking about development? Both the parties are saying that we will arrest migration, we will make Gersa in the capital, all these things, you know, which are relevant for the Pahari voter. But it all looks like a lip service because they are talking about development, which is not a coordinated development, which is not policy driven, but a lopsided BJP development. They are not talking about Gersa. Excuse me. Yes, BJP can you repeat? BJP is not sir? talking about Gersa, and it is Congress which has built a Vidhan Sabha over there. a raj nivas over there a vidhayak nivas over there okay. according to the dreams and aspirations of uttarakhandi people and uttarakhandi agitators so which way is this campaign heading to now i mean it it all looks like a uh, uh, a contest between narendra modi and harish rawat uh, uh, lokesh uh, yeah, if you could come it appear to be so and uh, within the constituencies i think it's it's again going back to the old issues of caste and uh, community and uh, who who has uh, gone to who's uh, wedding and uh, mundan ceremonies and 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 all those kind of issues which really do not show us a vision for the future okay so uh, i i think both parties they have taken their turns uh, you know five years this party comes and then they make a mess of it and then the next one comes so people of uttarakhand are i guess they are fed up of this see saw curve between but, the uh, two major political parties but if, if 2014 talking specifically about 2014 elections if you if you look at you had a face of narendra modi then you had a wave as well which was uh, favoring bjp completely but now looking at the two i mean the uh, the last 3 4 years if you look at it two big events happened one was the uttarakhand flash floods of uh, 2013 and then if you uh, bring, uh, see the last year's constitutional crisis which happened so popularity of both the parties hasn't it waned Uh, let me uh, again because uh, because uh, being an academician i'll have to elaborate a bit yeah no one but let, briefly sir yes uh, you know both the parties have a very limited imagination very limited imagination ha huh. now let me say one when when congress says 
having a high court at one place, then uh, your public service commission in another place, then capital at some other place, chief minister sitting at some other place. Today in internet age, do you require all that? Do you really require all that? I do not even, I do not know 99% of the population who are, who's using Google doesn't even wish to know where Google head office is located. Now the thing is, all these I things are symbolism. Sim they are playing the politics of symbolism, be it Congress, be it BJP. So politics now, BJP of symbolism? Is what BJP, now this is for, as far as Congress. Now here he said about Congress is doing this. So very well, so very well. But then, <laughs> then talking about BJP. Now BJP is also, you know, what have they done? What they are trying to do is, they are trying also to capture the imagination of what occurred in 2014 and let's ride that very wave and somehow we, if we succeed, so very nice. Otherwise, if we fail, then the, the only four uh, members of parliament are there from Uttarakhand, who cares? So on and so forth. You know, they have their, uh, their arguments ready, even if they win and they have their arguments ready if they lose. Now, the fact of the matter, is if at all you mean business and if you're if at all you are serious none of the parties would have done what they are doing actually Anupam you would like to comment on what uh, mr. Bhatt has just said uh, wh when you look when you hear the speeches when you hear, when you go to the rallies of uh, leaders like Amit Shah uh, Hari Shravat of uh, or for uh, that matter even Prime Minister Narendra Modi yeah. he's he's just hopping on one thing and that is that the Congress government has a corrupt government, is an incompetent government, they are patronizing the liquor mafia, they are patronizing the mining mafias. Uh, corruption is the only one issue in the minds of B, in, in, in the mind of uh, BJP. But how does Congress counter that? You know, corruption in fact, what, what I think and I have been to a number of constituencies, I have spoken to you know the voters with the local How voters. serious is this issue Corruption actually? is not actually an issue, interestingly. Okay. Interestingly, corruption is not an issue, I mean the voters are hooked with. They are just talking about the basic things. Right. You know, they are, they are just, they, they are, their desires are not very much big. They are just hoping so for if the you're small saying, things. I cannot just interrupt you. Mm. If you are saying that corruption is not a big issue, so is demonetization the biggest issue which is driving this election here in Uttarakhand? No, not again. Demonetization is not an issue in state, particularly in the hilly areas, in some in some of the pockets in plains, yes, it is an issue, but it is confined to an area specific, like okay. like the uh, like the border districts, like in Hardwar, you will find, you know, where there is a floating population, there is an issue demonetization, not in the hilly areas, as such. Uh, let, they, me, let me say one thing. Uh, I, 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 I'll come to you. I'll come to you. Let Let Mr. Dhirendra Pratap uh, respond. Uh, uh, Congress is trying to make not only Uttarakhand election but elections in other states also as a referendum on Modi government's demonetization drive. Uh, do you think you, I mean, uh, you're fair in your, uh, your, in your projection when you do that? In fact, demonetization is a national issue and not only uh, in uh, Uttarakhand but all over the India. People are fed up with this new decision of the central government and uh, as far as the election is concerned, I think uh, most of the Uttarakhandis are happy with the issue uh, which has been uh, given to the people, the Uttarakhandiyat. Uh, Harish Rawat represents and he symbolizes the Uttarakhandiyat of the Uttarakhandi people which you, uh, with, which you started as Pahari people. Right. Uh, he is talking about Uttarakhandi But I am afraid food. Mr. Dharin, He is talking uh, about Uttarakhandi culture. Just hear me out a little. You are talking about the spirit of Uttarakhand. You are talking about Uttarakhandiyat. But the real essence or the real ethos of Uttarakhand politics, which, uh, which I could use in the, in, the, uh, in the language or the native language which you say that uh, God, Gader, Koda and Jungora yeah, ki Rajniti. Yeah, yeah. But you are not, that sentiment is not resonating with the people. Why? I mean, you are offering hope, you are promising moon to the people, but the arm voter is not getting convinced with what you are saying, which means that there is something wrong in the way you have projected yourself. In the last five years, four sub by-elections had held in our state and all the by-elections had been won by the Congress. We won the Jila Panchayat elections, we won the Gram Panchayat elections. People are with us now because okay, people, people are, with are you, not you're supporting Mr. Lokesh, do you also feel that the real sentiment, the sympathy vote just now as what uh, Congress is projecting uh, themselves as and Mr. Harish Rawat also, I was interviewing uh, him uh, yesterday and he said that you know he's trying to project himself as a Kamzor Mukhi Mantri against the Balwan central leaders, you know this is the concept and this is what he's harping on in his rallies as well. So uh, this, this kind of a projection, does it really help and does it favor Congress? 
I don't think it helps anyone. And, okay. Uh, so whatever party wins in Uttarakhand will win on a negative vote. Okay. So people don't negative have an vote option. when you say what? what they don't have it? an option. They don't have a choice whom to vote for because in Uttarakhand it has become like the seesaw curve that for five years BJP rules right. over us and then the next five years the Congress comes and and they they take they take turns. Uh, over, which, which is which uh, is really an unfortunate uh, situation, uh, Mr. But like what Lokesh is saying, that people don't have an alternative, a credible alternative. They have seen what BJP has done. They have seen what Congress has done. And but what about those parties, like you know the regional parties, Uttarakhand Kranti Dal? They just with one seat. They were the ones who drove that uh, you know the Uttarakhandiyat spirit, the spirit with which the state was carved. What happens to these regional parties? Why have they just got? Uh, submerged into the, the in, in, into the ethos of the national parties. Two three reasons. One is uh, because, uh, uh, in spite of demonetization, uh, uh, contesting elections uh, are a costly affair. Now let me tell you okay, one so thing. Okay, you're looking at the financial <laughs> aspect. You know. <laughs> now, uh, uh, whether we, uh, whether good or for bad, uh, the regional parties in Uttarakhand don't have the resources as they have in UP or they have in Tamil Nadu with, that they can contest elections and they can contest it and they can fight it tooth and nail uh, with some cent uh, national parties. Mm. Now that is, uh, that is one and second is people still haven't uh, aren't still fed up so much that they start rallying towards them. You know, these are the two things which are required. And rallying point can be any. Rallying, you know, we, we have seen so many times uh, people rallying for some parties which, ha which are since, you know, f uh, uh, 15 days back they are, they are non-entities and then people start rallying after them. So, now this happens. So, which means from what you are saying, I mean, it's a hypothetical situation, but had the uh, Ahmadmi party come into Uttarakhand, they probably could have offered a better alternative than these two national parties. No, but, again, but then again, it would have uh, acted as a national party. Yeah. You know, again, yeah. I, I'm sorry, uh, because Ahmad, you know, when I'm talking about regional parties, now Uttarakhand, Kranti Dal or some other, I, I don't know which, uh, now such parties do not have the resources to contest elections. And as far as, wait a minute, uh, when, 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 uh, uh, otherwise, if you see, lot many independents also uh, win elections in Uttarakhand. Lot many independents, and fact, actually they fact, are the ones. Fact, they are the ones who have decided the fate of exactly. The, this, in this fact, uh, uh, Anupam, I'll, I'll come to you. Is it not a fact for this particular year that lot of independents who are contesting, whether it is uh, the turncoats from BJP or the turncoats from Congress, lot of them are going to hold the key to this election? Uh, definitely, they are going to hold the uh, key because you know. Uh, the constituencies are very small, particularly in the hilly areas. Mm -hmm. Where the margin of victory would be between, probably less than 1,000. Less than, less than 1,000, less than within 500. So, therefore, they can play a pivotal role when, uh, when this thing comes, formation of government. And you know, who are these independents actually who are fighting this election? If you will go by their profiles, they are either the BJPites or the Congressites who were denied tickets and they became rebel or something, you know, they were, they were like, okay, we'll fight this independent. Their background, I mean, they are aligned with the Nationalist Party. Absolutely. Huh? But Dhiran Pratapji, honestly tell us, I mean, uh, I just want a candid admission from you. I don't know whether you would admit it or not. You have turncoats on both sides, right? And people obviously are going to pick either A or B. It's, you don't have a third alternative. In hearts of hearts, do you really know that the, the Pahari voter might just press the nota option and come out in a case like this because never. they are fed up of both the parties? No and never. Now in fact uh, Uttarakhand What makes you feel so? Uh, in fact Uttarakhandis are basically by birth they are nationalists and this is the reason when he was talking about uh, the... Uh, now if you are talking about the nationalist uh, sentiment yeah, then yes. don't you think that BJP will ring better when no. they talk about OROP, no. they talk about surgical strike then BJP will look more convincing. No, no, people will talk then about the freedom struggle of this country. People will talk about the development which had been brought by the Congress in the last 70 years. Okay. People are not, uh, their memory is not so short that they will forget that what they had done with us. They had brought our government, a uh, democratically elected, a popular government, they had brought it down. 
they are trying to send jail to Harish Rawat, who is but, the hero of this state. But Lokesh, uh, he just spoke about the na nationalism and you know the way uh, surgical strikes are being uh, spoken of in the rallies. Uh, don't you think that BJP has cleverly scripted its campaign? Because yesterday also when uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was addressing the rally, he very smartly spoke about Orob, then he spoke about surgical strikes, knowing the fact that Uttarakhand is a state where a lot of retired uh, army personnel and serving personnel are here. So it's, it's like a customized, tailor-made campaign for the people here? Yes, it is, but uh, these are not the issues that resonate with the people. Okay. So I did a bit of research in, the, in Dehradun uh, mm -hmm. on the election issues. And for people, the election issues are um, alcohol addiction. The issue is unemployment. The issue right. is overhead high tension wires. Now, these are issues that you don't see in the political discourse anywhere. Absolutely. And it's an MLA election. We forget that it's an MLA election. People are looking at, at those candidates who can really offer solutions to issues like garbage or issues like environmental degradation. But, and, uh, and nobody talks about those issues. But uh, Mr. Bhatt, I'd come to you uh, before I take the final comments, uh, quick uh, comments from all of you. Uh, from what Mr. Lokesh is saying, every constituency here is a small pocket and it has its own specific issues. Uh, in that scenario and the way the two political parties are projecting themselves, so which means that we would look at it as a, as a larger election or we should look at it as a state election. I mean, uh, that way also the, uh, the picture is very confusing. Look, that is the problem. Because the, the reality is it's a state election, it's an assembly election, but the projection is totally different. Fine. You know, uh, that is the problem of the governance itself. The, okay. when, 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 you know, when you are contesting election, you are contesting election in a very small region. But when you start doing planning, you are doing planning for a big region. You know, uh, be it a, na a national election or be it a state election. This happens. This problem will remain. And this is, this is the story. You know, it is, it, this problem will remain in Uttarakhand, this problem will remain in any other state as well. Because when a person contests, the, person is, the constituency is a small constituency. But when, when you make a plan, when you, you make a plan for whole, also, whole right. of the state. But, so, but when you talk about a, a Himalayan state, you have a state like Himachal also, which can boast of its apples, orchards. What can Uttarakhand boast of? Mr. Dhirendra, you tell me. Can Uttarakhand really boast of something? I mean, you have been in the government, BJP has been in the government. This is the fourth election which the state is facing. What has been the biggest drawback in your policy making? That you have not still, in the 16 years down the line, you cannot boast that this is what Uttarakhand can boast of. Now Uttarakhand, quick, quick, now Uttarakhand is known for its services to this nation. We are the people, we are producing uh, most of the soldiers for this country who are... Okay. Uh, uh, soldiers, you can boast of soldiers. Uh, okay, okay. Anupam, uh, your quick comment before we wind up the show. I'll come to all of you. See, I don't think there's anything uh, we the Uttarakhand can boast of. You know, they don't have any specific thing to sell out or brand Uttarakhand type of thing. We are lacking on our, that part. Our honesty, okay. our, our, our honesty, okay. Lokesh? and our bravery. Lokesh? These are the biggest yeah, things. I think we could have boasted of the Chardham Yatra. We messed it up. We are still confused between pilgrimage and tourism. And, and a government has no, uh, successive governments have no solutions to offer. Okay. Look, uh, Uttarakhand can boast of lot many things, but those things are in spite of both the political parties. Now, Uttarakhand can boast of maximum people, maximum people having m graduates, maximum diploma holders in whole of India. By the way, it is it has now crossed Kerala. It has now crossed Kerala. It is one of the now, biggest teaching staff yes, also. Yes, let me tell you. Go quick, and quick, see the NSS report. The go I, and see I, the, I don't have time. No, no. Go and see the government documents. I am talking about the national, central government documents. Uttarakhand can boast of, it has a very high literacy rate, but that is in spite of uh, both the right, governments, right. both both the parties. Okay. I'm sorry. So, and in, uh, Uttarakhand has maximum number of postgraduates, women as well as women, uh, men. Uh, Uttarakhand has maximum number of diploma holders. Uttarakhand. No, that is there. But then these people have. To, I, my I God, the these show, people are I not even aware the of it. These people you have are given. not even aware of it. I have. I I accept whatever statistics you are uh, citing. But education, as he said, is also one of the most highly politicized departments. Whichever party comes to power, whether whether it is BJP or Congress or even a third alternative if it magically if it uh, erupts but they will have to think seriously about Uttarakhand's development not a lopsided development but a coordinated development with a serious policy making effort thanks to all my guests Mr. Bhatt, Mr. Lokesh, Dhiren Pratavji and Anupam it was pleasure talking to all of you goodbye and thanks for watching